Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another tutorial today. So in today's tutorial I am going to be drawing a flamingo and talking you through the tips and techniques that I have for drawing this flamingo realistically. So I really hope that you enjoy this tutorial. So firstly I'm working on the main part of the face on the flamingo because it's my main focal point and I like to work around this area. So I think flamingos are such beautiful and elegant birds and I absolutely love doing this drawing and using such a stunning up close shot of the flamingo too. And I have to say I think this is one of the best reference photos I've ever got and I downloaded this from a royalty free website called Pixabay and I'll leave a link to that site down below. Honestly, finding a reference photo so up close and detailed like this is really really rare and I'm really happy with the outcome as well. But anyway, getting back on with this tutorial, and although this is obviously a sped up version of this drawing process, I'd like to talk about some of the techniques I use to create this drawing, and I'm going to start by talking through some of the colours I used and how I use them. So first of all, a lot of people, when they think of flamingos, automatically get a vision in their head of this bright pink bird, and the first thing I noticed when I was analysing the reference photo was just how much brown, yellow, orange and red tones were in the flamingo. So that is the first tip that I have, just to make sure that you really are studying your reference photos properly with a bird like this, because there are actually a lot of beautiful colours in them. So for example, as I'm working on the beak on the screen, I'll talk a little bit about some of the colours I'm using and why. The beak of the flamingo actually contained a lot of flesh tones, so obviously there were a lot of pink tones in the beak, but also there were a lot of neutral colours as well, such as peachy tones, beige and creams, and then for the tip of the beak, that had a lot of greys, blues and blacks. So I decided to use my luminance pencils for this drawing as they are a wax based pencil and I thought this pencil would work best due to the amount of undertones in the bird and also with all the shading on the bird as well, especially on the beak. So I wanted these pencils because they blend so effortlessly. With the beak I really tried to pick colours that were just as close to the reference photo as possible and even if some colours were just slightly off, as long as you get your colours as close to your reference photo as possible, that is the most important thing. So in terms of the techniques I'm using to apply my colours, I'm working in a lot of layers and I'm going to talk about what using layers means and why it's so effective for coloured pencils. So with the flamingo, when I was studying the reference photo, I could see so many colours, shades, tones, undertones, midtones, and so on. So if I just use, say, one pink pencil to colour in the flamingo, then the flamingo would look really flat, unrealistic and unnatural. So that's where layers come in and what I mean by layering with coloured pencils is where you build up different colours and tones of pencils gradually so that you can use your colours to get very rich and saturated. So as you can see on the screen I'm not just using one coloured pencil, I'm using a whole range of pencils and I'm applying those pencils with a very light hand and using the side of the pencil to fill in the white paper grain. So for the tip of the beak, I used a lot of the black pencil, dark greys, light greys, blues and even a bit of purple. And then when I had enough pigment down, I burnished with a mid-tone pencil to blend it in with the rest of the beak. And anyone who is unfamiliar with the term burnishing, it basically just means where you apply a firm pressure onto the paper to blend the colours together and fill in the white grain. So now that I'm moving on to working on the flamingo's head, I really am just using a lot of the layering technique. So again, using lots of layers of different colours and then just burnishing when I have enough pigment down. Now if you wanted to, you could also blend out your coloured pencils with a solvent. So I actually use the Zestip Pencil Blend, which is a solvent, and it's basically a liquid like a paint thinner, which blends your pencils out. So you could do that and then just go in and add all of your fine details with coloured pencils at the end once the solvent has dried, but for this drawing technique I prefer just doing the layering and burnishing technique. Now just a safety warning for anyone that does want to use a solvent, please do make sure that when you are using any solvent or even a paint thinner or odourless thinner, you ventilate your room properly. So by that I mean open a door or a window to allow fresh air into your workspace as solvents contain a lot of chemicals and fumes. And also you could wear a face mask if you wanted a bit of extra protection too. 
So moving on now to the lower face and neck of the flamingo, and as you can see, I'm just applying a lot of different coloured pencils down. So for the undertones or base layer, I'm using some very light brown and beige tones, and then I'm layering some bright orange and pink as mid-tones, and also adding in some darker tones on top of that as well. So the flamingo did have some feathers, but they weren't really that visible. I noticed more shadows on the bird than anything, but I did use some of the buff titanium and white pencil just to pull up some of the feather strokes and highlights. But for this flamingo, the feathers really are so subtle, so my main focus is on getting in all of the lovely colours, tones and shading in, and this is one thing I would definitely say gets missed a lot. So if you are drawing an animal like this, definitely make sure you are getting in all of those beautiful colours and little details because it can really transform your drawings. So I do have to admit, although I really like the effects of layering coloured pencils, it can also be really time consuming, but as I say in a lot of my tutorials, coloured pencils are a really slow medium to work in. So one tip I have if you are using this technique of layering pencils is to just try and break your drawing down a bit, so don't try and do everything in one go. So although it looks like I did this drawing in one go, it actually took me around three hours to complete and I did this over two days. So the first day I actually worked on the eye, beak and face of the flamingo and the next day I worked on the neck. And this really did help me to take my time with this drawing, have a rest from it and I concentrated on it a lot better because I wasn't feeling stressed to finish it or rush it. Because layering is so repetitive, a lot of people can find it really straining and they get bored and they start to rush through the drawing. So I think being patient and taking your time is really important. But if you are someone who really isn't keen on the layering process, then like I said earlier, you could just use a solvent to speed up this process a little bit. You would just need to make sure that you don't have too much or too little pencil down on your paper because otherwise the solvent won't work effectively. So going back to the flamingo now and what I'm doing here is actually trying to get a lot of dark value down on the neck and that is because in my reference photo this part of the flamingo was really shaded so it appeared a lot darker. So again just watch out for this because a lot of people do neglect shading and contrast a lot and actually it's probably one of the most important parts of a drawing because if you can get good value and contrast down then your drawings will look more realistic. So after I filmed this video process, I actually went in and tweaked parts of my drawing and I actually did that to add more darker values and tones down to just hype up that contrast. And this is the one thing that I would recommend you do after you have completed any drawing. Just go back to it with fresh eyes and see if there are any areas you can adjust and just improve on. So the last thing I wanted to mention in this tutorial is also think about the way that you are using your pencils too. So for me, I always make sure that my pencils are nice and sharp and that I'm really applying the right amount of pressure on the paper. So for example, I apply light pressure with the side of the pencil for building up layers, the point of the pencil with a firm hand for fine details, and then I also pull up highlights and darken shadows too, especially once I'm finished so that I can get the drawing nice and rendered. But that actually finishes off this tutorial and I really hope you enjoyed this one and found it useful. And as always, I have a full list of the materials listed in the description box down below, as well as the links to all of my other social media accounts. But once again, thank you so much for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you never miss an update from me. I upload art related videos three times a week and I have a list of all of the materials, products and equipment that I use in the description box down below. But anyway, I look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye everyone.